Welcome back to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. I'm Victor Campos again. So lesson 8 in our chapter is all about JSON and AJAX. So this is the most modern way to create websites, dynamic websites especially. And JSON is the common format that is becoming very useful and practical nowadays. So for this chapter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the end result, and then you'll need to create it. I'm running it in Firefox. I'll explain why in a moment. I'll click Get a Character. So we get a little animation there. That's thanks to jQuery again. Um, we get a character that should be familiar from a previous assignment. Some text below her picture. Some text to the right of the picture. I'll get another character. So a different random character with a little animation and a little bit of their information displayed. So this is going to be somewhat based on uh, a previous chapter that we've done, but taking into account the latest concepts of JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. Everything that this character is here is stored in a JavaScript object. There is a picture, there is a name of a character, there is an origin of the character, and there are two superpowers they have. And then randomly we display a character with a little animation. The setup is that I'm going to have um, a JSON file dot JSON, which after you've read the chapter should understand that it is simply text. There's no special meaning to this text, but it gets processed via JavaScript or jQuery. So just to refresh your memory, we have the curly braces, then we have some key, colon, some value, comma, another key, another value. And they're separated in this way, key value pairs. Until the very last item, there is no comma. Between every other item, there is a comma. And we must use double quotes. If you use single quotes, that's not valid. JSON formatting. The final element in this object then has no comma. And we saw that in the book it tells us that we can get very complex because what if we've got a key of users colon a value of an array and in the array I can have multiple objects in there. So I can have for the first object you know John comma bill. But really, the way you're going to use arrays in JSON is for more complex data structures. So we would have another JSON object. And then there I could say name colon John. My second JSON object in the array name Bill. The next JSON object in the array of the JSON object name. So these fields here can be the same because they're referencing different elements. And of course I could be capitalizing and, and all of that. We can use strings, we can use numbers and objects in objects. So it's a way to store our data. But then we can get even more complex because not only are we saving a name, but we're also saving other elements. So then it behooves us to actually separate this and separate this into multiple lines, something more like this. It's the same data, just in a different presentation. Oh, actually, I will move this guy down here. Like that. So same data, but in different presentations. Because then what I can do is, if I've got a name of John in this object, then I can do comma, 
address. And it's 123 Fake Street for Bill, comma, his address is 999 Otai Lakes Road and Nancy Fife address five 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 anywhere away. So this is a recap of what you've seen in the book. For the particular assignment, you need to do the same thing in that you've got a char.json file or a car.json file, characters.json. And that starts off on the first line with curly braces. And it goes all the way to the end with its closing curly brace. I've got 100 lines here. And then we've got all cars, all of our characters. That's our key. Our value, colon, is then an array. And that starts on line two and goes all the way to 99. And that's just recreating exactly what I did a moment ago in this little bit of practice that I wrote. I've got a JSON object, name Spider-Man, comma, name Daredevil, comma, name the thing, comma. So I've got that field so to speak, with that uh, value, comma, a field of graphic, and it includes a link to the same graphics that we used for that previous assignment, and I'll include those links in the description of the homework, comma, another key value pair, comma, with Daredevil. The graphic key in its value, comma, the origin key and its value, comma, etc. So same schema over and over, the same structure over and over. Then we get a little more complex in saying, well, we've got a powers field, a powers key, and it is an array of power one and power two. So you see, we can get very complex data structures set up with plain old text. So JSON is plain old text. You may have heard of a, about it before, and it seemed some sort of complex mystical thing, but JSON is just plain text. What makes JSON JSON is that it's in a certain format. It has to be in a certain syntax and style. Besides that, you don't need any special software to use it. We're using JavaScript, of course, to process it. And what will be processed is a particular name of a character with a graphic, with an origin, and with powers. And that powers is power1, colon, spidey sense, comma, power2, colon, wall crawling. It's the last item of that array. It's the last item of that object in that array of that key of that particular object. Comma, same thing with Daredevil and then Invisible Woman, Kingpin, Magneto, Doctor Doom, Black Cat, it's all exactly the same scheme. You've got that one object as the last item of the array that we set up for all characters, all cars. And it has a name, key with the value, a graphic, an origin, powers, it's the last item, so no final comma there. And that is defining my character JSON data. This is, to some degree, a database. Traditionally, a database is often in some form of a server. But with JSON, we don't need a server. And we can store data. We will then retrieve it in the HTML file. In the HTML file, we have the usual setup html head meta title i do have style i'll get back to style in a moment in the body some sort of heading a button that will do something with an id you've done that before then we've got a div that will display two columns you've done that before a left column and a right column so a little bit of styling then the whole two column element simply takes up 100 percent of the width of the screen the left column floats to the left 50% its width, and then aligning the text to the center. 
The right column also floats left simply because we need to do that in order to keep them in line and its width is 50%. So the result is that we've got a two column setup. We've got a script declaration over to the jQuery library using the same one as before, 3.1.1, the minified version. Then uh, we've got the main script. We've got the new iffy to work with, which is simply the dollar symbol, and that encompasses the, um, the parentheses with no final executing parentheses. Remember, we don't need those final executing parentheses when we deal with jQuery. We saw that on the last exercise. Using strict as always, here's the new stuff. A variable that will create an XML, XML H TTP request, so XHR. It's a new XML HTTP request object um, that's focused heavily in the latest chapter. This will allow us to basically to connect to external content. I'm going to reach over to the JSON file and load its data into this HTML file. Since we're using jQuery, then we create some jQuery elements to store the button, to store the whole uh, two-column element, the left column element, and the right column element, with dollar symbols at the beginning to delineate that they are jQuery-based. We've got a get car function. I'll get back to that in a moment. And then at the very end, we've got the event listener for element button get car on a click run the get car function. So the button is active. What happens with get car is that we use the XHR object to open a connection to a file. We're going to get data from the file. Which file? The car.json file. And we're saying this is true. It's an asynchronous call. We are connecting to that file asynchronously meaning as we attempt to connect to that file, we are also free to do other things, not just wait for the connection to the file. It's asynchronous. To actually try to connect to the file, this is to prepare us to, to connect to that file. To actually connect to the file, we do xhr.send. That actually connects us to the file. Well, send, what are we sending? We're sending a request to connect to the file. And we're not saying any extra parameters, so we say null. Just connect us to the file. Onload, xhr.onload. If we manage to properly load the data or connect to the car.json file, do the following, an anonymous function. This could have been a named function, but we can get it done with simply an, uh, an anonymous function. So function, open, close, parentheses, open, close, curly brackets, that encompasses all of that. So what happens on loading the data is that we need to parse the data. We need to convert the data into something that we can work with in HTML. All of this data that we got from the JSON file, it's just plain old text, but it's set up in a way that we can use it as an object in JavaScript. Hey, that's JSON, JavaScript object notation. So we need to parse it. We need to process that data. That's what my line 48 is doing here. Create a variable called car object, the object that stores all the character data. That comes from xhr.response text. That xhr object is full of um, properties, and one of the properties is response text. So basically, we've gotten all of this data as text in the XHR object. That was the whole point of that open and that send. Well, then we need to apply JSON.parse. Notice JSON must be in all capitals. JSON.parse. We apply that method onto that data, which then gets stored in the car object variable. So all of the data has been stored all of this plain data has been stored as this JavaScript object, where then we can apply all of our jQuery or JavaScript knowledge to it. We're going to randomly get a character out of our data, so 
We've got random car variable with a good old math.random. This is going to be times car object dot all cars length. Well, what that means is inside of the JSON data, that's all the JSON data there, we've got all cars, all characters. And that is made out of an array, as I said. So the zeroth position of the array is Spider-Man. The first position of the array is Daredevil. Um, the second position is the thing, etc. So this is an array which has a length. From that array, its length from that object. That's our range. Random object from uh, zero to the length. Well, to guarantee zero, math.floor. So that's not new. We then create two strings that are empty to store the basic data of the character and the stats of the character. The string that will hold the name is made of uh, a paragraph, an image tag, with a source. But in order for us to load up the dynamically chosen character's image, we need to say from the character object, from the all characters array, the particularly random number that was chosen, give me the graphic. So breaking it down again from the data, the all cars array, a random position of the array, so let's assume it's uh, random character one, which is Daredevil, give me dot name, there's name. So it would display Daredevil's name there. If we wanted graphic, there's a graphic, which is an address to a link that I'll provide you. So the source is set to whatever that address is. We close the tag, close the paragraph. On the next line, something similar, we add more to the string, we create a new paragraph. This time we're going to display the character's name. So from the character object, from all the data, specifically from the particular position of the array, we'll say number one again, give me the name and display it on screen. Well, that's building up our string to actually display it on screen. We have our L div left column element and we will write some HTML into it. We're going to write the string that we've crafted. In order to do a nice animation, we then chain a hide jQuery method and then fade it in in two seconds. For the stats, something very similar. We've got our stats string. We're going to add to it a paragraph where we'll say origin. We need to get the origin out of the data. So from our character object, from our, our all characters array, whatever position in the array, origin field. From our data, from the all cars array, from the particular position, give me the origin field right there. And that displays. Then I'm going to display a bullet point list. So add more to the string, new paragraph, start an unordered list. So UL, unordered list. We've seen that. And then list item, list item, start list item, end list item, start list item, end list item. Notice the concatenation going through. From our data, from the array, from the particular position of the array, this time give me powers array position 0, P1. That's a little more complex, but let's look at our data again to see why that makes sense. We've got the all cars array, x position, and then we've got powers. Well, powers is an array in an array in a JSON object. Powers has JSON data in an array, which is JSON data in an array of JSON data. So yeah, it can make your head hurt sometimes, but as you do it, it, it makes perfect sense. So powers, it's the key, colon, it's value, is an array, and an array has zero position, one position, two position, etc. We've got one JSON object in this powers array. 
so it's position 0. There are no other positions in the array. Don't be fooled that we have p1 and p2. That's not position 0 and position 1. Both of these are keys and values of one object in position 0 of the powers array. To show you, if you wanted position 2 of the array, comma, a new JSON object of, let's say, parent 1. It's not actually his parents, but there's Aunt May, comma, parent 2, Uncle Ben. So now we have powers array position 1, because powers array position 0 is the powers, the P1, P2 data, whereas position 1, or you know, um, item 2 of the array is the parent's data. I'm going to take that back, just that was an example. So that's why we're getting powers 0 with position P1. And every character has the same thing, a powers key with a value of an array, and they all have just the 0 with position, and they've all got a P1 and a P2, and then a different uh, value. So that's list item 1, list item 2. We end the list, we end the paragraph. We need to display that string stats on screen. So L div write HTML display that string. We're gonna need to hide it first so we can fade it in. And then I want to add a delay of a little bit of time. I want the left column to start to fade in first, and then the second column, the right column, to fade in one quarter of a second later. And that's going to take uh, one and three quarters of a second to fade in. So everything's going to fade in in two seconds, but the right column starts to fade in a quarter of a second after the left column. And then that ends our get car. The result of that again is, I'm going to refresh that, that we get a character. So from our data, we got this character, we got that character this character, etc. So there's a picture being loaded on the left column and the text, the name. Then we've got origin field on the right column and powers P1 and P2 being loaded on the right column. If we have venom, same sort of thing. You see the, the slightly different speeds of the um, fading in and such. So an origin to display and two powers in addition to a picture and a name. That's what this is doing. So many of these uh, concepts, we've already looked at them, but the big idea is that now our data is coming from a JSON file, an external JSON file that is saved in the same folder as the project. So that data is stored in the project folder. We've got the index.html file and the car.json file. And that's just, again, that's that plain old data which is then processed in the HTML. And that works because, to remind you, on line 43, we're saying get from car.json file. If this were on a different folder, we'd have a different path. If it were on a different server, that's another, that's another discussion for another time. This could work from another server, but from our knowledge at this point in our setup, we're not going to quite deal with it. Also, what I have to say is, as you test this, I've been testing it in Firefox. We've been using Chrome the whole time. Let me load up this file in Chrome. It's the same as before, get car, nothing happens. Looking at our console output, we get a big old scary error. A XML HTTP request cannot load car.json. Cross origin requests are only supported for protocol schemes, HTTP, etc. So 
Chrome is being very strict and not letting us load our JSON data. And that's good because Chrome is keeping us safe. In theory, we could possibly open up a, a, a JSON file full of viruses and such uh, or other bad data. So Chrome has a very strict view about not opening external files if they're on different domains. And technically, we're trying to open car.json from file colon car.json. Chrome will only let us open it if it's coming from http colon slash slash car.json. And we don't quite have the knowledge to do that at this point. So the whole point of this is in testing the lesson eight assignment, you should test it in, in Firefox. Um, I think Safari works just fine and Internet Explorer works fine and I think maybe even Opera. Chrome is not going to work, unfortunately. You have to do more steps to get it to work in Chrome. So I'm going to say test your work in Firefox. Go get it from firefox.com or whatever the address is and then it'll work fine. If you are testing it and looking at your console, you will see a not well formed message. Ignore that. That's just Firefox trying to be also very protective of us. That's just Firefox uh, saying that technically the data it expected wasn't what it expected. So don't worry that you're getting these not well formed errors. So every time that I load up my data and try to get a character, I'm going to get that message. It's going to work. There's the thing. I'm going to get another one. There's Dr. Doom. It works. It's just that Firefox isn't sort of thinking that the data we fed it is what it thinks it should be. It's looking at it as probably XML data, even though it's JSON data, and don't worry about converting it and not well formed. This works in a real environment for us in testing. We get that little quirk, but don't worry about it. But the big quirk, unfortunately, is that it does not work in um, Chrome. I'm going to load it up in Internet Explorer. Well, this is Edge, just to see how it works here. Get car. Yeah, Edge isn't loading it either, but that's okay because it's not a big deal. We know that it works on one of the other browsers, but the, the problem is that we're loading the data not from a real server as you would often get JSON data from. So there you go. Go back and uh, check out this code. It's not that much code. It's not that complex. The complexity comes from building this data structure. And this data structure is very unforgiving. So make sure you read the chapter to understand how JSON fully works. Check out the example here. And um, this is going to be your next homework. You're going to create what I'm showing you here with your own bare hands. So this has been Victor Campos for CIS 165. See you next time.